I, I did. I really dig the chorus of that song, but I find the uh, I find the verses almost comical. I wouldn't say I get offended. I just like roll my eyes at them constantly. But but I love the chorus of the, of the, of his song. I can change even if and I, I can change even if I try even if even I, if I wanted, wanted to. My love, my love. I love that. That's like hauntingly beautiful. My love, my love, my love keeps me warm. Keeps me warm. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I might as well just start the intro of the show. I'm John Riley, Jace Down, Couchmaster General, and Mr. Joke of the Day, John C. Riley. Did I just say my name twice? I'm not even eh, sure. You can say it multiple times. It's that important. You should it say is it. actually that important. One man who knows better to eat spicy foods, and he <laughs> does not like steak foods. Mm-mm. It's uh, Mr. Steak Lasagna slash whatever. It's Phil. That was simple. Now, the only thing no, it wasn't. steak wise. The only thing Here, let me try that again. Here. Wise. Roses are red, violets are blue. We're having sex because I'm stronger than you. It's Phil. It's Phil. And the only kind of steak that I do like is I like meatballs. I, I, but I like steak really... is in meatballs. But it's, but it's beef. It's beef. I guess the only beef that I like is meatballs or, or a giant meatball that is meatloaf when it's cooked with tomato sauce. I don't enjoy when they try to put steak sauce with meatloaf. That's just disgusting. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here this week. We are without uh, – I, I guess Jesse's going to hopefully uh, meet up with us soon. He has a couple of stories that he actually wants to talk about during the show. So that'd be cool. Uh, if we can't get a hold of him and he doesn't arrive before the show ends, we're, I'm, I, I might actually just do one of his stories. But we have a packed show for you now as you're listening via YouTube or Mixcloud because – do you know people uh, – have asked me why I use Mixcloud because predominantly it's used for a lot of people with music, whether it be DJs mixing stuff. Well, here's the thing. SoundCloud costs money and they have a cap on their uh, uploads. Like you would have to pay around 10 to $15 for unlimited uh, uploads of your shows. Mixcloud does not. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's a great hosting site, so you're able to put your audio up in there, and boom, there you go. You'll be able to listen to it. It doesn't really change the the listening experience for you, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to. And also, there's an app on the Android and iPhone market, so you'll be able to check it out, out there. So moving on to our first subject, I remember that Phil was actually talking about this on his show earlier this week. Mm-hmm. So it was about Google Plus being associated with YouTube pretty much a lot of people on YouTube being forced to become uh, Google Plus members. So yeah. I guess it's one kind of shitty way for them to boost up their uh, viewership because it's almost like, uh, I don't know, it's it's kind of hard to say because in a dying social media network, the only way for them to salvage themselves and say, hey, we're relevant now is to make everybody on YouTube, which is a very, very successful um, you know, pretty much media marketing tool whether you need to learn anything boom you're on youtube and people who create those videos now have to be associated with google plus phil your thoughts yeah they've been, they've been kind of pushing they've been doing this for a while been pushing this uh change and and they started with uh g chat and pushing in g chat connecting with your google plus and they've been connecting everything and you had to sign up you had to link your youtube account with your gmail account change your name there was like 10 different name changes yeah and as yeah as john was saying google plus has been failing and it's been tough for getting people over to use it which is kind of hard kind of I like the interface of Google Plus. I I don't know. I think maybe the base social networking site that fad is over, so it's kind of tough to get people over to your ship when the ship's already in in some ways sinking and other options are popping up that's more streamlined than a MySpace or a Facebook type thing. But but as John said, since it's failing, they're they're glomming on to their most successful property that they own, which is YouTube at this point, besides the search engine, of course. And, 
and forcing people to, if they want to leave comments on videos now, pretty soon you're going to be forced to open and use a Google Plus account. So it, by, by tricking the system into getting more numbers, is that really increasing traffic to your site? They want to do that so at the end of the year they can say, oh, we've, we've attracted this much attention to Google Plus and we should keep it going. No. When they tricked people into doing it. It's, it's bullshit, John. It's That's complete how- bullshit because the thing is I've never really been affected by this and it doesn't really affect me because uh, me and you are both creators. So we, uh, But, of course, we would love to comment on things. But I have, I've had a Google Plus account when it, when it got popular. And then it just went downhill, and I know a lot of people who are trying to take questions for their shows just abandon Google Plus because it's yep. a barren wasteland. But I really don't even care. Like, I don't even go on Google Plus anymore. I haven't been on Google Plus in months. But in order, I guess, how would you say this? I am logged in. Technically, yeah. technically, I've been logged into Google Plus um, numerous times this week, probably all week long. When it comes to uh, just logging in, because when you log in, you have to associate your Chrome or whatever it is with your YouTube account or Google Plus in order to uh, do certain things. But yeah, it's funny that it comes up with three different names for me, and I had to make sure that I'm always on the Couchmasters YouTube page and not the JC Riley page because there's a difference between partnerships and everything right there. Like JC Riley does not have a partnership, but the Couchmasters does. So, and I want to make sure that I'm properly commenting on certain things so I can get the word out. So I'm not uploading things to that page as well. So, yeah, the only reason I'm on Google Plus is uh, I talked to someone, I use Google Chat, which now you have to open, basically use a, use a Hangout, which is connected to Google Plus, which, which I do think at the, uh, that's one of those things that I think at base idea works a little works really well. Google Hangouts is a smart idea and being able to upload that right to YouTube. It just doesn't work in practice. And again, forcing people to use it is just is just a shame. And connecting everything with YouTube into it and the fact that live streaming, when you want to do the live streaming for YouTube, you're actually using the Google Plus application. It it's so there's it's no a- way to actually broadcast like VidBlaster or Wirecast onto youtube for a live stream it always has to be google hangout you can't you that's what you're using to broadcast when you when your account on youtube gets accepted for live streaming when you get that little check mark in that situation when you do the live streaming you're basically using the google hangout application to stream live that's unfortunate because that makes me never want to strive for a live streaming ability on the couch masters website or couch masters youtube page because I I would kind of say it's kind of irrelevant. Like I know that, I, and I've seen nothing but fail come from the Google <laughs> Hangout because not only is it uh, the ability to switch on, even if somebody coughs, the camera switches to that person. And also every time it switches from camera to camera, it has to refocus for some reason, even though the person broadcasting is in perfect focus and everything. It's constantly switching around, so it's, I don't know. It's the only time I've seen it be a success is on a very high scale when there's people getting paid to use it and getting those high, high, high uh, quality signals. And even then it freezes sometimes, but usually when it works, you're having a, a, a extra person that's not in on the broadcast running it and switching yeah, it like a like live a TV. Switch. Yeah, technical exactly. director running the show. Have, if you have someone to do that, then it can possibly work. And I know a lot of people use it simply for convenience. A lot of people that do post episode recaps of uh, of different television shows and podcasts that way record their audio live uh, while they're doing a Google Hangout, similar to what I do on UStream, like recording the uh, and we and uh, we've done a couple times here with the Couch Masters where we record our audio live and then we edit it later. Rec- release it as an audio and a visual broadcast. And in that case, it does work, but I agree with you. On the, con- the base consumer level, Google+, Plus for anyone to use it for broadcasting, it's a lot of fail. And, and this whole YouTube forcing themselves, uh, uh, Google forcing u- uh, users and everything, uh, it's simply said, as we said before, it's a lot of bullshit. It sounds like almost like the, uh, the wingman taking a, uh, uh, jumping on a grenade. Because pretty much in order for you to get the hot girl, which is YouTube, you're going to have to hang around and spend some time. And someone's going to have to jump on that grenade, which is Google+. 
So yeah, we've all we've all done it. We've all <laughs> taken out pins out of someone's hair so our friend could could uh could dance with the devil by the pale moonlight. We've all been there. It's you're unfortunate my, that stuff uh, goes around like that. You're but, my number one guy, John. Oh you're, yes, you're my number one guy. Always until someone else comes around, and they're now your one number one guy. <laughs> uh, moving on to TV, we uh, there was actually a really cool video that came out this morning. I believe was this this morning or last night? Uh, it it was last night about about eleven o'clock or twelve o'clock last night. I, oh, okay. I watched it I probably probably about one in the morning is when I watched it. Okay, with Breaking Bad actually listened to the fans, and they actually <laughs> created a Breaking Bad alternative ending. And it yeah, was pretty they, cool that they they did not use the actual ending of the series, and then uh, for that they just use a personal part of the series back in season five when he was talking to uh, the distributor about like you know you need me and all that yeah. other stuff. Uh, same my the same it was from say my name yes say my name. that was the name of the episode. Thank say you. My name. It, it was when he was like say my name Heisenberg, and then all of a sudden you're goddamn right. <laughs> And he wakes up, and of course, what was his actual name? What was Brian Cranston's name inside? On the show, it was Hal. Hal. So Hal wakes up, freaking out. He's got a beard on. Uh, he's freaking out, and crying, and acting the way Hal does about and, uh, but, certain things. And right next to him is Lois. And it what was funny about this, it, even more, and John was hinting at it. The fans basically taught. This was a joke. I felt like I was the first one to come up with. Everyone feels feels like they're the first one to come up with this joke. It was it was a joke right after the episode that wouldn't Breaking Bad be funny, but because there is some crossover from Breaking Bad into The Walking Dead, where Merle in in uh, one of the seasons is seen with blue meth. But uh, but so there was a lot of talk about crossing over in episodes and talking about wouldn't it be funny if at the end of Breaking Bad he woke up, it, Hal woke up and it was all a nightmare he was having. And as John said. They listen to the fans, and that's what happens. Hal wakes up next to Lois in bed, the Malcolm the Middle parents, and they're and it's it's fucking hilarious. And Brian Cranston plays it so perfect, and she plays it. Plays this it is excellent. what you get for have for growing that beard out. Yep, you're all crazy, and he's like, oh, and no, I'm. But the only thing that's similar to me is we were both wearing our underwear. Yeah, we were both worried. That was the best line in the whole thing. And then he starts talking about Jesse, and he's like, "Yeah, there was this, there was this kid that looks like he's always wearing his older brother's clothes, and 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 he, and he always says, but the the b word, like like science b word. <laughs> it, was, it was it was just perfect. If if you haven't seen it, I don't know if uh, jo John can put the link to the video, or he's gonna play a little bit of that audio right now. I don't. Yeah, I, don't I can know, actually it... do that. One second, let me just pull it up real quick. Yeah, we can. We're we're you're pre-recording, so we can just. Yeah, no, no, it's it's really quick. Boom, we we got it right here. So here's the audio from uh, from the episode from the uh, skit. Well, where was it? This skit was just released on a website on Dig. Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And uh, Michael, uh, well, so far the person has the most God. views uh, is Michael Davies. So I'm not quite sure. I think it's just a fan that uploaded this. So, but uh, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, one more than one million, one point five million <laughs> views already. Damn on this. right. <laughs> And what makes Breaking Bad so amazing is is the fact that the creators in such a serious subject show could ha always continue to have that dark sense of humor. L listen to the fans. Don't listen to the fans to drive storyline, but listen to the fans in the sense of, oh, I, oh, they like Jesse? Let's keep Jesse alive. They like bitch? Let's throw in as many awesome bitches as possible. They like Saul Goodman? Fuck! Let's do a spinoff with Saul and not even have it just be a prequel. Let's have it be a... Uh, a sequel as well to Breaking Bad, so it's it's awesome. Everything what do they call happened. that when they actually do what the fans want? It's called fan something. Fan service. Fan service. Thank you. I, I was trying to remember the right word for that. So here. Wake up, honey. Honey, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. For the love of criminy, what is it? What's the matter? Oh, oh I just had the scariest dream. <sighs> I told you not to eat those deep fried Twinkies. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. I was. I, oh, I was just. Meth this dealer. pregnant pause is brought to you by Breaking Bad. What? Yeah, <laughs> I was this world class chemist and I and I cooked and I sold this ultra pure methamphetamine. <laughs> I love how he mispronounces you cooking it. Cooking anything? There was a guy who never spoke. He just he, 
He just rang a bell the whole time, and then now there's another guy who was who was a, 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 a policeman or a DEA agent. And I think it was my <laughs> brother or something. He looked like the guy from the Shield. And then there was this other <laughs> little guy who was a, a waif, a man-child kid who always looked like he was wearing his older brother's clothes. And he would always say things like, "Hey, bitch." <laughs> The B word. He would use the B word a lot. He would say, "Yo, B word, yay, science, B words." Okay, okay. Calm and then, down, honey. Just calm down. Calm and, down. And then, and then there was me, and I had a shaved head <laughs> and a goatee, and I wore a black hat. And the only thing that made sense in the whole dream is I still walked around in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny it's you really guys, funny it's really well done well acted especially by her i mean cranston's having a lot of fun playing hell but she she sells it because she's like locked right back into that character and my and she was my favorite part of at the time i really liked brian cranston on on uh malcolm in the middle but, but he was she was awesome he, he, he was, was an awesome afterthought he was show. always like the bumbling father yeah. But the the person that pretty much stole the show was the mom. So. Was the mom? She was she was she was so perfect in that role as the bitchy in control mother, and she she just had it down and and had him whipped. It, it, it was just great to see them working together in a scene, and and I really do hope uh, I, Brian Krentz is going to do a lot of awesome stuff. I do hope he gets the Lex Luthor part. That w- I think he would do an excellent job. No, no that would be great. Of- no, I would I would love to see him in that, but it's probably never going to happen. So I think. You'd uh, probably move on and just do a lot of – that would be an extreme fan service, but that would also be changing the uh, – like it wouldn't be changing canon, but it would pretty much it's, – it's a little too much if they like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, you know, let's just go for that. Why don't we uh, – I to personally all the Star think he'd Trek be a fans. better Commissioner Gordon, and he has oh, done yeah. the voice of Gordon in the past in year one. Batman I think he one. looks more the part movie. of Gordon, but we'll see. Let's just make Patrick Stewart Lex <laughs> Luthor. I want Patrick Stewart to play Mr. Freeze eventually. Oh my god, that would be so awesome. How would they make Mr. Freeze inside that actual Batman reality, like the true reality? You would just have him be some it would just be a doctor, some like some sick scientist that maybe uses uh what's that stuff that uh the Terminator uh that they they freeze the Terminator with uh that can the co- the cold shit fucking liquid, liquid nitrogen liquid nit- nitrogen yeah and somehow he uses li- he creates some weapon with liquid nitrogen I, it's possible oh it's totally possible the uh it, did you see the picture of brian cranston in the all pink get up he had the pink sweater and the uh, pink pocketbook with the pink teddy bear yes i did that was pretty funny like he definitely knows how to go with the jokes and stuff and it was just literally heisenberg all in pink and he was also on uh, this past week's episode of How I Met Your Mother. It was good to see him pop up and and uh, reprise his role as Ted's former boss. And it was good to and it was good to see it's good to see him uh, flex his comedy again after doing such a serious role for so many years. True, true. Moving on to another show that's actually going to be debuting tonight and mm-hmm. having the second part tomorrow night, two hour season premiere is Almost Human. Almost Human is going to be on Fox tonight. And it's starring Carl Urban. Most of you guys know him as the. Uh, I would actually say because it's disappointing that this movie, the second movie sequel, will never be made. But the wicked awesome Dread movie that's actually on mm-hmm. Netflix right now, which I'm a huge fan of. Even though a lot of people, I, I would have to say that uh, Raid the Redemption. If that movie did not exist, I think that Dread would have did a whole lot better because Raid the Redemption is a uh, Indonesian film. And it's literally almost the exact same thing, but with no dread and more martial arts. It, it's also worth uh, mentioning that it probably would have done better if the Sylvester Stallone movie never existed. Uh, don't even get me started about that it, because that's but it's true. But it's true that there's it is like very true. It's one of those movies that was so bad that it has such a cultural significance of how bad it was that people are swayed away from that the character. That stigma pop. is still it, that stink is still on that movie, unfortunately. Yeah, on, the, on that character, and it's tough to, and it's tough to. It would it'd be like doing another Daredevil movie. As they're as actually they, thinking about doing that because um, uh, who has who has the rights? I think Marvel now has the rights for Punisher. Yeah, they own it again. And Daredevil again, back from I think Sony. Yes, yeah, so did they? I think they own the Fantastic Four again as well. Yeah, which they're actually they're actually working on. Yep. The new uh, new Fantastic Four movie is coming out. So just a little bit about the show. It's of course you know the man behind Star Trek's reboots, which Phil really isn't a big fan of. And the man uh, I like the be, first one. I, I like the first movie. 
And the man behind the new Star Wars movies that are coming out in 15, 16, and 17. Don't J. forget J. Lost. And, of course, Lost. Yes, of course, J.J. J. Abrams, a fringe Lost revolution. Of Person last year. of interest, Star Trek movies, Mission Impossible franchises, and the creative executive producer of uh, – uh, the creative executive producer J. H. Wyman. Okay, so it's pretty much J. J. Abrams and J. H. Wyman, the guys from uh, the Fringe. So show. what we so what we know right away is that this show is going to start off really, really strong and then go nowhere. Let's hope not, because I, I really see this the the potential of the actual uh, the actual trailer looks looks unbelievable and it looks no, it really look cool. cool. So a new uh, what do you call? It? Let me see what the synopsis of the actual website says. From series- from what I can see, what John's looking up that info. Yeah, I, it looks like it has a little bit of an AI vibe to it, where a sense of they're in a world where where there's uh, androids are being created and being partnered with cops and stuff like that. At least that's what I've picked up from from the from the from the ads who knows what it will be like i hope there's a lot of comedy to the show because- i hope so because literally the fact that like uh the literally the synopsis is right the year is 2048 meet Don't detective die. john kennex <laughs> who is carl urban a cop who survived one of the most catastrophic attacks ever made against the police department after waking up from a 17th month coma he can't remember much except that his partner was killed and he lost one of his legs and he's now outfitted with a highly sophisticated synthetic, synthetic. I don't even. What, it. It's, it's a it's a robot <laughs> leg. Yeah, techno Suffer- babble leg. Suffering from depression, <laughs> mental atrophy, trauma, onset OCD, PTSD. So that guy's pretty much fucked up. So of course he's going to be taking illegal <laughs> black market drugs. To- I'm not hanging out with any robots, you bumbling asshole. That's pretty much what he says in this. <laughs> it seems pretty cheesy, but. The fact that it looks really good as far as coming right here. Of course, you know, Sandrum (laughs) Maladon. I hope they. Maladonado. Good try. I hope I hope they embrace the cheese because if they, if they want something like this to be successful, they need to go full on yeah. Han Solo shit talk in the robot style and have him just talk nonstop shit to these robots. From what I've seen, he uh, he gets outfitted with a robot. And uh, the robot tries to rat on him, so he destroys the robot by kicking him out of the car. And they, they give him a fucked up robot because there's no other robots left. And this is the one that they try to make at the start, but was a little too human, a little too wacky. Of course, whoa, whoa, hilarity ensues. Yeah. But, Brett uh, Spiner is going to be on season two playing Data. You know, it's so funny. I've actually heard that Brett Spiner actually might be in the show. That would be awesome. He should be. He should be. He needs to work more. He's awesome. Yeah, you know, that's strange because that actually is what I've heard. So I just am going through certain clips. <laughs> well, I'm on the – also, you also need to get Malkovich to get in there because of the knock. I'm well, John then, Malkovich, motherfucker. Did, have you ever seen the movie Making Mr. Right? It was a movie in the 80s where John Malkovich played a uh, human android that was created to go in for far space travel. He played himself and – he played the android that he made, and the android fell in love with a yes, girl. Yes, yes, I have seen that one. Wow, that that just brings me back to a lot of crazy stuff that actually happened. Yeah, a lot. So, so the android thing's been going for a while. So it's cool to see this go to TV, and it's all when it's been done the best. It's I think it's done comical the best. So, and Carl Urban does have comic chops, and he also has action chops be, from being in the Lord of the Rings movies in the Star Trek movies. So. It'll be it'll be cool. I, I'm and Fox. I Fox has been doing some making some good shows. I really love Raising Hope, a show that's been on last couple of years, and uh, they also have a couple of other good good things that have just come out. The Blacklist, and uh, so so we'll we'll see. see I, I haven't I, given any chance to Blacklist. I haven't. I haven't James either. Spader but there's some people that him. I know that really really like it. I haven't watched one episode. I can't take James Spader seriously. James Spader, and I cannot believe he is actually going to be Ultron in in the uh, second Avengers movie. What? Is yeah, that, no, that's he, real? he's Ultron. Oh my god. Yeah, I can't you know take what? It, James fucking Spader seriously. I just see him as a as a douchebag in an '80s John Hughes movie. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, you know, it would have been great to actually see. Uh, What's his name? The guy who actually played uh, 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 Tony Stark's uh, robot. Tony oh, Stark's. Jarvis? Jarvis, yes. I believe that something has to do with Jarvis turning into Ultron. Hmm, interesting. But I, the I'm, voice I'm not up of, on my uh, uh, Marvel stuff, so. 
the the voice of uh, it would have been great to actually have him as the voice of Ultron, but for some reason they feel that Car- uh, what do you got? Not Carl Urban. <laughs> That James, that James Spader would be better. So that's like putting Kiefer. That's like putting uh, Val Kilmer as the voice of Kit. That's just like or Kiefer like, Sutherland as Metal Gear Solid. Oh wait a minute, they already did that. I got that's... to see a little bit, a little clips of it, and I totally forgot that Kiefer Sutherland is the new voice of uh, Big Boss. Who oh, is of now... uh, of Snape or 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 Snape. 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 Snake, but it's actually not Snake because uh, the last two videos, uh, it's been the origin person that – because Solid Snake was actually a clone of Big Boss. So Big mm-hmm. Boss is actually a protagonist and hero of this game. Well, the first part of Metal Gear 5, which is Ground Zeroes, and then the second part is the catastrophe of what actually happened, I think close to his death. So moving on from Almost Human past TV into some really quick videos that I actually wanted to share – with you, I can click out of that. There's no need for that. Um, here you go. Here's two clips. Um, one is the most emotional rejection ever to a prostitute. Yo, daddy, I'll suck your big black dick for $2. No! <laughs> That's the best acting since Major League One. I think we're gonna have to do it this way because that's the best way for uh, me to record it and use. Oh, really? Games. Really? That's the best way? Yeah, that, that's the best way right now. <laughs> like that's good quality right there. That was that was good. That was actually really good. Here, here's the other one right here. Here's our uh, next audio clip. That's actually pretty funny. I don't know oh. what show this is on, but apparently it's on ABC Family HD. It's called Incredible Sex Equals Horrible Death. Okay, give me a second. Yeah. There is a reason it didn't just happen. It's not a mystery. I had sex and now dad is dead. And he had a horrible death because I had incredible sex. It's just the way life works. I don't know why that made me laugh so much because it's, it's. Oh my so, god, that's so the fucking most hilarious thing ever. I don't know why either. I can't explain why that's funny, but that's fucking hilarious. It's funny because it makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> so it's uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I always want to uh, remember that. So, uh, but it's too bad my computer does not remember any history. That's the way I like it. So yeah, me too. Me too. Clear history is your best. Clear friend. history. Yeah, there it won't remember anything because I have constant. Uh, constantly, my girlfriend tries to get into my Facebook and post uh, inaccurate things that i would not say so like i like dick i like dick dick. i love big huge dick in my mouth and stuff yeah please my if you see me put your dick in my mouth pretty much pretty much so she's hysterical here's uh (laughs) here's our last story when it comes to uh xbox one and all the uh you know how expensive it is right it's a it's about five hundred dollars right five hundred bucks five hundred bucks could you imagine getting one for less than five hundred dollars, legitimately, probably not. Not unless, not unless you were a prostitute or something like that, or do, or trading services in some ways. Well, apparently, one kid actually got that for. Uh, I think it was for either free, or hey, let's see, I'll bring that up right there. Uh, it, it's on Reddit right now and it's pretty much the Doritos, you know how, um, we probably don't know this Doritos and, uh, Mountain Dew are giving away as far as a two minute auction thing that was happening one night. And, uh, pretty much, let me see if I can actually bring this up on the subreddit when he was actually explaining how much he got it for Doritos <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> I'm putting in coordinates, Doritos, Reddit, Mountain Dew, Xbox One. If you put those coordinates in, it takes you to a place in the desert, in the Mojave Desert, that if you dig down... Beep, boop, 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 uh, cue the uh, creepy space music, and now you will we're get to the mushroom traveling pink. through the uh, internet. Doritos, click, 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 click. Spiders. X- spiders, Reddit, Mountain Dew, Xbox One auction this is amazing how we're explaining to you how search engines work here at the couch masters this is why we're masters we know exactly how the internet works spiders magic mario going down pipe sounds and there we are okay he um right here this is a breakdown he got it i think for 311 dollars 
Wow. So uh, see my post above for details of what I spent. But as far as the product goes, I poured all the Doritos into gallon-sized Ziploc bags. <laughs> One standard bag of uh, Doritos or two gamer packs filled with Ziploc bags. I have 43.5 gallons of Doritos and 118 bottles of Mountain Dew. Minus the bunch I've already drank already. My cost was three hundred and eleven four. No, that's actually how much he spent just on the food. So he actually got it for free. So he got it for free for the three hundred eleven dollars in in treats and Mountain Dew. Yeah, and so he's going to develop some stomach problems. For it's going to be great. Well, he's a college kid, so they have iron stomachs. Uh, oh, it, his stories um, is posted like you know through pictures on Imgur. That's uh, via Reddit. It says, on a rash decision, I decided to buy an Xbox One through the Doritos and Mountain Dew every two minutes auction. I got some friends together, and we eventually bought at uh, – we went to the uh, the campus store, and we bought all the Mountain Dew from the campus store, all the small Dorito bags from the Walmart, and, and Giant Eagle, I guess, is their local thing. It shows a kid had pretty much holding everything in the back. Then it says, we had to stack all the Doritos on my friend's back. Uh, then it shows, it says what 165 Mountain Dews look like. And it shows some kid bathing in a bag of Doritos. And it says the process open, have one person opening the Doritos, one person opening the Dews and recording the codes, <laughs> one person writing all the Doritos codes and one inputting all the codes. Wow. And they're all sitting in a living room doing this. And now John, don't, uh, don't you wish you weren't this lazy? Cause, cause if, I mean, we're, we're, we're not lazy. We come here, we do podcasts, we, we do stuff, but I'm way too lazy to do all that. But it just shows how, uh, how creative college students can be when they really, really want something. Yeah, no, it, it does, and how non-lazy they can be, but how lazy I am, because I would be like, eh, I'm just spending the extra, it's not even 200 bucks. I'll just spend the extra 180 bucks or whatever they got. Well, throughout well, all that stuff, he actually found the correct code for the auction, and uh, he posted it right there. And uh, 40,000 calories and 25 pounds of sugar later. Success. Mm, mm, yummy. So he actually won that. And your winning bid was uh, the code. If I'm wrong, and it came with Dead Rising 3. So it was pretty cool. So it says your winning bid. Uh, apparently he, he was able to get all the codes. And his, it says winning bid 4,000. No, 42,201. Date 11 16, 2013. So I'm trying to break that down. I'm pretty sure that Jesse, who is probably a little bit smarter than me, could probably break down and explain to us if he spent $300 on food or that's how much the Xbox One actually cost him. So, from what I was looking at, I and I'm not as smart as, as, uh, as anybody, but it does seem like he spent the money on the food and saved up the all the stuff to be able to get the device. So I think he just spent on food, and that's why he has all the food in the bags and stuff hanging out. So it says, yeah, um, one uh, he goes, hey, if you wanted for three hundred and fourteen dollars, that's a hell of a deal, and pretty much have a year supply of Mountain Dew and Doritos. Mm, I, I could deal with the I could deal with the Doritos. I don't know if I could uh, Mountain Dew. I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of the Dew. I, I don't do the Dew. Do the Dew. Oh, I love Mountain Dew. There's nothing better than Mountain Dew. I miss Mellow Yellow. Uh, you know, and that just reminds me of a, <laughs> uh, a toilet. Yeah, it does. It's a, it's a disgusting thing. It, did, it looked very much like urine. I believe, speaking of Jesse, I believe he is, it does say he is online right now. We are calling him in the process, so Jesse might be able to. He may pop on at the end of the show. Yeah, he so. might pop, up, pop on here at the end. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. So, uh, what do you call it? No, 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 no. It's a good thing that we all do this pre-tape, so I'm happy about that. So Yeah, it's easier to, it's easier to edit stuff after the fact. Very true. Yeah, every time I uh, want to play videos, I'm just going to send them to you via Skype. Is that cool? No, it works. That yeah, works. because I can record it and you can hear it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure everybody else can hear it. It's coming through a strong signal. Well, what's that, sweetie? Oh, it was the crazy ones. Okay. There was a. <laughs> I'm actually quite enjoying the Robin Williams uh, comedy that's that came on television. Pretty funny. What is it all about? It's uh, about him and his daughter, Sarah Michelle Geller plays his daughter. Oh, and, yeah. And they they run an ad agency. It's I mean, there is some some it, product placement or product talking that they talk about products. But for the most part, it's pretty hilarious and has a lot of really funny one-liners. And they have a, a decent cast of characters that have a good chemistry. And it's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's nothing special, but it's funny. 
So. Uh, I, well, I don't know. Um, is Jesse even popped on, maybe? I don't know. I see, I, I see his little picture. Hey. I hey. Saw him. hey, okay. Gentlemen, I am sorry. Well, we are just about to close the show up, but yeah. Bye, everybody. Hey, Jesse, you got back from Punxsutawney to, to announce the uh, the whole thing with the groundhog. I, but it's the wrong um, day. But it was the wrong Jesse popped thing. out of the hole, and now we'll have. Uh, an as awesome it, as it turns out, it wasn't a groundhog either, as as one thought. Oh. No. no, it was a puppet on a stick. Uh, um, I was very Gibson. disappointed. Mel Gibson was holding the stick too. It was a puppet of a beaver. And I don't know how they fit Mel Gibson in there. <laughs> it's a, it's a bit crazy. It's it's a bit it's, wild. It's just nuts. I highly recommend the Beaver. Everybody. Hey, let me it. ask you a question. Uh, Jesse just got on the air, so uh, yeah, just got on the air. So hey, uh, let me let me ask you a question about the Mountain Dew Doritos win. Now, is that awesome? Yeah, it's awesome. But now, did they spend three hundred and eleven dollars to get the free um, Xbox One, or did they win an auction for three hundred and eleven dollars? What I could gather from the um, from what I read in the Reddit post. Was that they paid four hundred dollars in Doritos, Mountain Dew, whatever it is, whatever these things are, and then went on that auction thing that goes on. So technically, they spent four hundred nine dollars to get that. Still, that's get that dumb. Xbox One. Yeah. I'm sorry. So for four hundred nine dollars, they got both the Xbox One and a year supply of Mountain Dew and, and Dead Doritos. Rising Three. Yes. Hmm, not bad. Good deal. I, I think they made out in it. Yeah, definitely. I'm too lazy yeah. to do it, but good deal. Yeah, well, I think they also had help, too. Yeah, about three or four of yeah. their friends. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any friends. No that friends at all. That does make it difficult. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Pre-orders are for suckers. If you're pre-ordering something for a game that has not come out yet, and they're still working on, you're literally, it's like literally putting... Yeah, putting a cock in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, for some people, I think they would do that for the Xbox One. Some people, yes. Mouth. Yes. Yes. Or letting people touch them. <laughs> well, at least there's well, a payoff <laughs> of that. I think if you let someone touch you and you get an Xbox One, I think you come out a winner twice. Winner. Chicken dinner. Winner, mm-hmm. winner, chicken dinner. So, uh, Jesse, uh, Phil, if you need to take off. Uh, I will in a few. Okay. Jesse, do you have a, uh, something to say about um, night moves last night? I was working on my night moves last night. So my brother had to distract me, and by d- to do that, he brought me to Brookline, Massachusetts, where a new cafe opened up called Night Moves, K-N-I-G-H-T, Night. Get it? It's a clever pun. <laughs> and it's a board game cafe Ooh. where you go in. And you play board games with your buddies and pals, or maybe you'll make some pals and buddies there. And it was a ton of fun. It was really a good time. I played uh, the Christophers of Catan, uh, the Citizens of Cain. I, I, I forgot. Hold on. Let me look it up. The Settlers of Catan, um, which I guess is a very is a big board game, and it's huge in Germany. I, I don't, I'd never heard of it until last night, and I had a shit ton of fun. Hmm. I recommend it to anyone who plays board games or likes cafe. Now, how much is it is, to uh, is get in? Spanish for coffee. What's the admission price? It's uh, it's ten dollars for one day, but they also have like membership membership deals too. Um, you can look it up online. They're on Facebook, um, and you can see all the information there. Do um, they have but, tournaments and stuff there. Inside? What's that? Do they have like tournaments and stuff? Yeah, you know what? I was I was talking to the guy a little bit. The guy actually got really busy uh, while we were leaving, so I didn't get a chance to really talk to him. But he's planning on doing things like D and D tournaments, nice. uh, Magic Card. Awesome! I'll go. Um, he has something called Netrunner, which I guess is pretty big. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with a lot of this board game stuff. I'm, I'm it's pretty, all new to you, right? To the PC. What's that? It's you're pretty much like a uh, PC, Mac, MMORPG kind of Dota. Mobile yeah, well, player. I don't really care for the Dota stuff, but yeah. <laughs> I'm a pretty big board game fan, so that sounds very appealing. Oh, it, you know, it's a ton of fun. If you guys ever want to go, let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm arrange I'm a party for down. the Couch Masters. Awesome, that'd be fun. And there's also an Anna's Taqueria right next door, so you go grab some burritos and then head over. Burrito, burritos. That's all I got, guys. Cool. All right, I guess we yeah. can end the show right now. You can find us. Uh, 
at, uh, well, you can find me at, at Jace Down on Twitter, uh, The Couch Masters uh, on Facebook, which is uh, www.facebook.com uh, slash sit and be merry or uh, Jace Down Studios on Facebook and Phil. You can find me at I Got Issues Man on Twitter. Search uh, the Issues Program on Facebook and find all my podcasts, news articles, and videos at issuesprogram.com. Jesse? You can find me hiding underneath my bed from all of the responsibilities I have. <laughs> and also, Jesse, it's, it's a little week uh, later, but I know that I made fun of you uh, the last time, I guess, the last time you were on about your birthday coming up. But uh, seriously, uh, Sincerely, happy birthday. I'm glad. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay. One year older, but uh, I know. wiser nonetheless. Well, I wouldn't say about wiser, but I'm definitely a year older. Aha. Aha. True, true that. Yes, cue the music. No, the music is already playing. Why am I saying that? <laughs> cue it again. Cue it again. Start again. Okay, stop it. Stop it. Stop. Rewind. And it. now play it again. <laughs> No, now it's playing about. right now, and we're going to enjoy this. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything, uh, Working guys. Working on my night. Do you have any questions for me? Jstownshow at gmail.com. Thank you, and we're out of here. Bye. Bye. Oh, what a great show, Jesse. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah, happy I could come in in the last 10 minutes. Can't, they can't all be like me and Phil. Awesome. Oh, yeah, sure. This is good. Same thing. Uh, Same thing. I want to be awesome. Let's be awesome together. Yeah, let's, all, uh, let's, let's, let's move into a house like the monkeys or like the Beatles. And hell, yeah, we can have multiple <laughs> webcams everywhere. We'll just do the Couch Masters live 24-7, like a live webcam thing. Yeah. Oh, man, that'd be ridiculous. A reality show. I, 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 do, I could just live on Justin.tv where people just figure out a way to do it for like a long weekend, maybe. <laughs> that'd be possible. Live on Twitch, Twitch.tv, I, I, the Couch Masters play video I games and just hang out. And just, yeah. Fuck yeah. And Answer chat things. questions and everything, so. It's fun. <laughs>